everybody, welcome back to the Style Lounge. I am just hopping in very quickly before today's tutorial to introduce you to our brand new makeup expert, Lauren Rippon. I had known Lauren for just over six months um, and she's one of those people that I just instantly clicked with. She is an absolute gem. Not only that, she is such an amazing makeup artist. I just knew as soon as I met her and learned about what she did and had some experience of how she did it because I've recently had a makeup lesson with her. I just knew I had to get her on my panel for the Style Lounge so, so that she could share, tongue twister, so that she could share some of her amazing advice and expertise with you all. What I really love about Lauren's approach is that it's so genuine. She only recommends products that she uses. She uses these things on herself or um, on her brides on their wedding days. She also does photo shoots for fashion magazines and television. So this is a woman who really, really knows her stuff. She has gone out and done all of the legwork for us and is bringing us her top picks, her top tips. So all you need to do is watch, learn and listen. Enjoy this one. Um, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to do a full makeup on you. Um, we have obviously, you've had a makeup lesson with me before, we've talked about colours and things yes. that work for you. Yeah. Um, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk to you about um, um, base and what works as an under base for most people, what works really well in summer for a foundation base, yeah. what works really well in winter for a foundation base because you should change things up, and then a little bit about skincare. I've put on some, my, one of my, I, I mean I, I, I've talked to you about this before but I don't really rate primers but I really yeah. like one primer okay. which is the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer. It's a primer and moisturiser in one. It's not necessarily going to be an all-round moisturiser because it doesn't, it's got hyaluronic acid in which is right. like the big, you know, big news at the moment. Yes. But it doesn't have SPF in. So I think you still need to use a, a separate moisturiser, a separate moisturiser for that. I really like the SkinCeuticals one. It's an SPF 50, it's got a little bit of a tint in it and I really like that. I've heard of SkinCeuticals. It's a really good brand. That's the skincare that I actually use now. Is it? Yeah, and I, I absolutely love it. So I've got rosacea and I went to a skin clinic and talked to them about what I should do with my rosacea. And they um, they used skin suit well they recommended skin suiticals to me and that's what I've used ever since and it made such a difference to my skin. Right. So what I've done so far, I've put the Smashbox primer on, which is the primer moisturizer in one, and then on your lips I put Dr. Lip. Now that is um, it's called original nipple balm for lips, and what it does it helps to heal your lips. It's a med medical grade lanolin, so it just I've never found anything for lips that heals in the way that this does. So you might put it on your lips when they're really dry on an evening, and by the morning they'll be all healed again. Oh, and nice. in the way. So it's really Dr. Lip. Dr. Lip, yeah. Right. So for the purpose of the video, do this one. Now the great thing about this is you can um, pick it up on aeroplanes are selling it now. So it's um, yes, you're right. Yeah, yeah, they are. I saw it on my holiday. Yeah, it's there. So it's about ten up, which I think is a really That's good. Great. I bet it lasts for ages as it well. Does. Or if you've got some lanterner knocking about in your cupboard, you could use oh, yeah. that. Yeah. Um, so what I'm doing now is I've obviously primed um, with the Smashbox, um, and then over the top of that, I'm putting one of my new favourite products, which is a great summertime product, but also really good. It will be a great product in the winter because it will give you that luminosity that you don't have in the summer. Mm. And that is the um, Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. Yes. So it's um, what I like about it is you can use it mixed in with foundation, you can use it separate to foundation, you can use it on its own because you've got amazing skin. And I think at this time of year, most people's skin is at its best, especially because we've had so much sun. Yeah, like right. you've got freckles, I get freckles, and I think like your skin just it's got that luminosity mm. that everyone's craving. You know, everyone's talking about strobing and highlighting, and that is basically us trying to drive that summer glow into our skin. Yeah. And I'm all about that. I think yeah. it's really, it's, you know, it's what, it makes you look youthful, it makes you feel like your skin's at its best, and I think, you know, you're not having to falsify it in summer as much, but anyway, I still like to use the products that give that glow. So on top of that, I'm now putting a Mercia Tinted Moisturiser, and it's an illuminator. Now, it's got SPF 50, uh, 20 in it actually, which is like, I mean, it's really, it's That's a really right. good one because I found when I'm wearing this in the day, 
and it's really sunny and it has been really sunny these last few weeks I'm not getting sunburn and so you know that even though it should be SPF 50 that feels like it's a good amount it's a good coverage yeah. all, and that's in shade I would say that Anna you're probably you know the average yeah. sort of the average to fair I think like you know you're colouring now got this colour like, yeah, you've got a nice colour yeah so the shade I've put on you is 2N1 um, and okay. so I think I have that shade in my kit and it seems to be a really good all rounder and if I want to make it darker I mix it in with obviously being a makeup artist I have loads of shades so I mix it in with a darker shade but what I would say is go and get tested for your shade at uh, Space yeah. NK is probably the best place Space to NK is the way, place to recommend. I think for Laura Mercier they do sell it in lots of places but I love what I love about Space NK is you can go in there you can talk to the girls who are all really knowledgeable um, and they they're just they're experts in all of the products which you yeah. just don't get going anywhere else and you're always kind of dubious whether they're actually you know whether it is the right thing for you because obviously when you go to a counter they only know about their, their products right yeah. because it's again because it's summer i'm not going to use a heavy concealer on you i think when we're growing up we're getting this habit of using concealer first and like yeah you know, i used to have that rimmel stick and i used mm. to draw it all over my face and You'd spend that long concealing and then you'd put foundation on and then you'd like wipe it off all your spots. And so I think the better thing to do is just if you've got any breakouts or any areas where you went want more, more coverage in summer especially, is to just bob a bit of foundation. And usually you've got you know your foundation hanging around if you don't wear it every day. Mm -hmm. um, and you can just put it on the areas you want that extra bit of coverage and you can just build it up. So um, I have my two favourite foundations here and they are Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk and um, Makeup Forever HD. I don't right. know why I'm reading it, I know exactly what it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, the shades that I'm using on you, I'm, I'm sort of trying to narrow it in. I, I like to mix and match shades, oh, it's <laughs> lovely. I mean it's not cheap, it is an investment but I think that that's the thing with with good base, you should you should be paying a good amount of money for your base. You can get away with cheap blushes, cheap eyeliners if you want to not spend much on eyeliners. Even cheap mascaras, as you know, my favourite mascara is one of the cheapest ones out there. Yes, like. yeah. Um, so Max Factor Masterpiece is what I recommend for mascara, and it's nine ninety nine, and it's always on offer. And so yeah, I'm I'm definitely not a makeup snob. I just you know. It's a bit like when I say to my clients about a capsule wardrobe, there are certain items that you need to invest the money in, and then there are other things that you can do a bit more cheaper and cheerful. So I suppose it's the same with the main mm -hmm. kit, really, isn't it? So what I'm doing is I'm going over any areas that have got high colour or want a little bit more coverage. I'm going over those areas with the foundation. These two foundations are really good all around us for most people. I think no matter what your age, no matter what your skin type, I think the key thing is to get your skincare right. I think people yeah. come to me and they're like, give me a foundation recommendation. And I'm like, what's your skincare? The big thing in skincare... Um, which obviously you will talk about with your skincare expert, but for, for me has been the introduction and for me the discovery of serums. Really? Yeah. Hyal Hyaluronic acid for me has been really good. Vitamin C serums, like all of all of the serums have made such a difference. Which brands do you, do you have? Because I've had some from The Ordinary. Yeah, I'm using an which ordinary vitamin C. I think it's a 20% and... It's got something else in it, vitamin, another vitamin. But it's, it, I, I really like that. Mm. Um, it's not it's not got the same, I don't know what you'd call it, the same suspension or whatever it is. It doesn't feel quite as uh, rich as the SkinCeuticals one. But what I would say is that it is, um, it is doing the same thing to my yeah. skin as yeah. the SkinCeuticals one is. Moving on to concealing now. When people are thinking about... Um, where they want the concealer to go. I think the key thing for most women is this this under eye area here. So this oh, yes. kind of like it's almost like a C shape. So we're going from here down. And I think the the most important thing is that you're not getting right up to the under eye area. I think I always like, do that. Yeah, too much product. It just overloads that under eye area. So when people are talking about concealer, they talk about. Um, uh, things that go on the under eyes, things that cover blemishes, things that just generally, you know, if you get rosacea or if you've got, I've got a thread vein there I like to cover. Mm -hmm. So if you've got things that you want high cover on, then you need something that's got a bit more depth of, um, 
of pigment. Now, I really like the Laura Mercier concealers, and this one is secret camouflage, and this one is secret concealer. So the difference is the, is the feel of them. Right. So this one is a much harder formula. I just rub my finger on it, just pat it on the area where I'm wanting it. Mm -hmm. This one is a much more creamy formula. It's great for the under eye area. So, so that's the secret concealer for the under eye. This is the secret concealer for the under eye. Okay. Now people always talk about YSL tissue clout and you know. Yes. I, I think it's great. It's a lightweight highlighter and mm -hmm. it's nice for putting on the tops of your cheekbones and things like that. But this secret concealer is great because you can just take it wherever you need it on the under eye area. So I just pop my finger into the pot and then just with my ring finger because it's softer. I take it, the, the pressure I mean by softer, I take it in a C shape almost under the depth of colour. And what's going to happen there is when you're patting that product in, you're not taking loads and loads of product on the under eye area. And if you need to add, you can add. But what I like to do then is go back in with my foundation brush and just blend across. And then back in again. And I think the key to, you know, professional looking, long lasting makeup is that you're just doing lots and lots of fine layers. Yeah, rather than just one whammy on. One, yeah. Which will look great, but you're not going to get that longevity and you'll have patches and, you know. What, with regards to the under eye, because yeah. like, mine can get quite puffy, which obviously makeup can't cover. Yeah. Is there any like little tricks that you can do before you put your makeup on that help to deep like do these creams that you can get that say they reduce puffiness? Do you know I think um the best thing you can do for that under eye area is cool it. I think that it's usually puffy down to external factors like you know some people just get puffy eyes when they sleep or obviously yeah. hair fever affects it, any other allergies. Um I think when you start putting creams in this area here it builds up. And yeah. I mean, I've spoken to people who have been plastic surgeons and they'll like talk about how they'll do operations to cut out you know, the cream of the under, you know, wow. that's, that's built up. And it's, so we've got to be really careful what we put on, on under that eye area. Yeah. Right, I'm taking um, some more into this central area here. Now, the reason for that is because that is the real, where you get that real dip, that's where you get your depth of darkness and everybody gets it. This was something that really stuck with me when you did my makeup lesson because I never thought to put anything in that area. Yeah, and it just opens And it makes up. such a massive difference. Yeah, and I think that's the thing, it's like just, you know, just those little tips, you know, if if by watching this video you just get one or two little tips, it's just those extra little things. Just just to go over what we've done, we've used the Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer, mm -hmm. we've used the Hollywood Flawless Filter from Charlotte Tilbury, the shade in that I think is three. Um, there's, there's lots of different shades in that, but three I think works really well for this kind of summer look and yeah. gives you a little bit of colour. You can wear that on its own. Of the top of that, which can be worn alone or, or with the same routine as we've done, the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturiser Illuminator. And then over the top of that, in, in pinpointed areas, we've taken Armani Luminous Silk in shade 3.5. And then on the under eye area, the Laura Mercier Secret Concealer. I'm feeling much happier about being on camera now, yeah. I have to admit. <laughs> so, we can at this point powder. Um, and right. like people, you know, some people love this glow. Personally, I love a glow. Yeah. Um, it's probably not looking great on camera because it can come up quite shiny on camera. But I think it's that luminosity that we talked about at the beginning. Mm. That's what everybody's trying to achieve. And I think that if you can powder minimal, it's it's better. So I'm going to show and talk about the powder that I use. But as I say, generally on a day to day basis, I don't powder. You don't powder. I do powder my clients. So if I'm doing a bride that needs her makeup to last all day, I will almost over powder to start with, yeah. knowing that the the oils and the heat will push push that product. But all my brides get a touch up kit with some powder in as well, so they can touch up with that powder as the day goes on. And mm -hmm. um, so what I'm doing with a really this is I mean it's a fluffy brush, but it's kind of a, a dense, smallish fluffy brush. This is by a brand called My Kit Co, which was originated by a makeup artist who worked for MAC. And he's um, gone out there and everything's completely cruelty free. None of his, oh, all like of the, they're all synthetic fibres. So yeah, it's, it's amazing. So, right, I'm going to take some powder around the nose area because most people 
Um, but especially, you know, people who have open pores like you do, Anna, they, mm. they do lose product in that area. Yeah, it just seems to like disappear. Yeah. And that's why, you know, it's that old saying, powder my nose. Because, mm. you know, that's where the ladies would go to the powder room and powder their nose. <laughs> So yeah, and then I'm going to take some just across that area where I've added a bit of concealer just to make sure that stays put. Mm -hmm. Now, if you do want to invest in a product that is specifically a powder for the under eye area, I mean, it is, it is an investment because you're buying a powder for your face and a powder for the under eye area. I didn't even know such a thing existed. Well, it does. <laughs> yeah, of course it does. So these brands know the stuff, so of course they make something for everyone. So um, the pressed powder is Laura Mercier Translucent Press Setting Powder mm -hmm. and then this is the Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder for the under eyes. Are you going to use this on me and then I'm immediately going to want to go and buy it? Well you're going to have to go to Space NK immediately and uh, <laughs> we'll have a TSL meet up oh at Space NK. Yes. <laughs> we'll get anything done. <laughs> right and just look up to see it. So the key thing when you're powdering the under eye area is just to get all of those, because obviously at this point I've put product in that area mm. and then we've been chatting and naturally that product will settle in the lines that are there. Yes. And everybody's got lines, whether they're you know 15 or 50 mm. or 100, you've got lines in that under eye area because it moves. So yes, when people say, oh well it's settling my lines, well it's a, it's a product and ultimately it will, it will find its way in there, especially if it's a liquid or a cream product. But the key thing is, before you set that with a powder, that you just go back over it with your finger and uh, then okay. you just press that product in. Now what I like about this is obviously it's got, it's got brightening spheres in it, so when you look at it, it is a tiny bit sparkly, but not like glitzy, it doesn't look sparkly you know, on you now. Yes. Um, so it bounces the light away um, and it does really help to set your, powder, uh, set your under eyes but without it being really over powdered so mm -hmm. I really, I do really like that. I absolutely love cream blush. It is my favourite thing. Yes, cream blush. <laughs> We've discussed cream blush at length because the one that I recommended to you was discontinued. I know, yes. Which is annoying. And yes. it's so annoying when brands do that because you fall in love with something and then they'll all of a sudden stop it. Mm. Yeah. So, um, so the one I'm going to recommend to you isn't discontinued. So it's the, um, the same product I recommended in a different shade. So it's still a convertible colour, but this one is in shade Lilium. Ooh, so okay. this, it's not quite as bright as you like to wear, but I'm just giving this as a good all-rounder because I think this is one that a lot of ladies would like to well, wear. Yeah, good. I do love a, a lot of blusher. So this, yeah. <laughs> Don't we all? But I'll put powder on, on top that's nice. No, yeah. But, yeah. yeah. This one is, um, this can be worn on your lips, it can be worn on your eyes, I think. Uh -huh. But primarily I do use it on the cheeks. But this is a lovely lip colour. Yeah. You know, if you want that sort of that natural, nice natural kind one. of browny pink look. So I'm using it on a really short stippling brush. However, when I'm teaching people or, or um, explaining how to do your own um, blush, I quite often use my fingers yeah. as well. So I'm, I'm going to show you both ways. So I put it on the brush and then put it onto the back of my hand. Now why I love using cream blushes is because you get that sheen that you just don't get from a powder. So you'll notice that what I'm doing here is I'm putting this over the area that I haven't powdered. You should never put cream on top of powder. So you should do cream, cream, cream powder basically. Yeah, so finish with the powder. Yeah. So if you're using a cream foundation, it works with a cream blush. If you're using a powder foundation, like for example Bare Minerals or something yeah. like that, you're probably better off going with a, with a, a powder, a powder blush, blush because it's just not going to work as well. So the position of where you put it, the best thing you can do is, is get to know your, your face, mm -hmm. get to know where your bones are, and it should go on, you can actually feel your cheek mm -hmm. bone and feel the density of the bone there, right. and that's where you put the product. Do not smile and then do it, because especially as we age, when you smile, it changes the position of your cheek, and then when you go, <laughs> droop, so, yeah, it like, yeah, totally in the wrong position. <laughs> I'm just laughing because that is what I always do. I'm like that. Yeah, yeah. Put it up there. So I think that's the thing. So I think keep it, keep it where where the burn is, and then just. I'm smiling. Sorry. It's all right. Yeah, I'll just my happy. face, my face isn't sagging yet. <laughs> We're not at that point yet. 
So I'm going to show you how I would do it with my finger. So again, I'm using my ring finger and I'm just taking it in the same position. So almost quite Aunt Sally-esque if that's a, a, a reference that's age appropriate for this video. But So we're putting the, the blusher kind of where you imagine that blusher would go in a circle if you were looking at a doll or something. Mm -hmm. And then in a teardrop shape, we're just literally just patting with our ring finger and just blending it out. Don't rub it, because what happens if you rub it, you rub away not only the blusher, but you rub away all of that lovely work that you've done underneath it. So by patting it, you're just pressing it onto the skin base. So I've got a really nice foundation palette from MAC, um, and in here I've got two cream blushes, which I don't use all that much, but I think they're discontinuing them. There's a thing. Typical. Um, and some really nice, um, some shades that have got sheen, which I think if you've got sheen in, um, in a blush, it's great for summer. Yes. Really nice. And I think then the matte shades you can use for, dare I say, a bit of contouring. Okay. Um, and, um, and also just to give you that, just a wash of colour. Mm -hmm. I think it works really nicely to use a matte shade. But because it's summer, um, I'm going to put a really nice shade called Peachy Keen. Oh, I've heard of that one. And I'm just going to take it over the top of what we're doing. Again. Smiling. Stop smiling. <laughs> But what I love about this is obviously we've, we've put the density and the position of the colour with our cream blush and that's also giving us a really nice plump finish and that luminosity shining through. But then by popping this over the top, we're sealing in that blush mm. with a complete thing. The thing is, with, with highlighting, it is one of those things where it's like, if, you, if you're doing it every day, it's when it's those people who have a lot of time on their hands. So it's, yes. like, it's, it's a nice to have in the daytime. I think for an evening, for that something extra special, it's, it's nice. It's lovely, isn't it? I really like this one, which is um, good old MAC. I don't think you can go wrong with MAC. I think it gets overlooked sometimes because there's all these new brands and there's a lot yeah. of noise coming from these new brands. And, um, you know, the only downside of MAC is it's not cruelty-free. Um, so obviously if that's a priority to you, then obviously you have to steer away, but there's so many brands out there that aren't unfortunate, it's really hard to keep mm. things completely that way. Um, the highlighter position, so this is matte cream colour base in pearl. So yeah, it's just a really nice daytime highlight. So to recap on this section, obviously we went over with the Stiller convertible colour yeah. in Lilium. Yeah. We have gone over with the Laura Mercier translucent powder, the under eye, under eye brightening powder, and finally the lovely peach cream blush, and yes. then the um, MAC cream colour base in pearl as a highlighter. So that's it, base done. How does it feel? Like it feels nice yeah. actually, considering, because normally I will put on, I do, I wash my face, put my moisturiser on, I let that sink in while I do my eye makeup, mm. and then um, I just pop a one foundation on. So the fact that you've put quite a few different, like you were saying, those lovely thin layers, mm. it doesn't feel heavy at all. It's really not, it feels just very lightweight and I can't even really feel like I'm wearing anything. Yeah, and I think that's how it should be. I think like if, if I was to tell you, oh, I'm going to put four four layers on your skin and then some, I think you'd be like, oh my god, yeah. perfect. But I think because it's just small amounts in the right area, it doesn't feel really heavy. No. And I think if you were to change this up for winter, you would probably need a bit more foundation. Yes. Yeah. So I think we would probably take foundation more down the central area, um, more concealer um, on areas where you might need it. I certainly get high colour in winter, so I put more on my cheeks. Um, obviously, depending on levels of hydration, how tired you are, things depends on how much of the Under dry. the eyes, that's my area, yeah. definitely. And that's, it, it's irrespective of summer or winter. I think, you know, you under eyes and you, you, you get darkness or you don't get darkness. It's as simple as that. So, yeah. But certainly hydration and sleep really, I find, help. Yeah. Massively. Massive. Which massive no one difference. gets enough of, so... I definitely yeah. do. <laughs> so that's it. That's the base stuff. So I really hope you enjoyed your first masterclass from Lauren Rippon. I just had such a lovely time filming with her. I think that you can probably see we had a little bit of a giggle and there are a fair few outtakes that I might share with you all at some point. Um, if you have any questions or comments, as always, you know how to reach me. Drop them in the Facebook group and either myself or Lauren will see them. Or you can drop me an email at anna at um, And I will see you again very, very soon.